Yes, I've got a great webinar called the, Become Part of the 9% on 9 to 1% losing spread betting. Um, and you've got to, well, there are so many things you would need to do um, to become part of the 9%. If it were that easy, everyone would be part of it. And there's a lot of intelligent people making up part of the 91%. Um, and in fact, you will always vacillate You'll be in the top one and you occasionally will be outside the 9%. But what you do need to do is you need to potentially decide on a strategy that looks after all elements of money management. And we've discussed the risk reward. We've discussed losses. You've got to manage losses. That keeps you in the game. You've got to, make, you've got to believe you have a system that will make more than it gives back on its winning. It will win and will lose all the time. No one is ever going to have 100%. So accept that losses are part of the game and manage that. Um, become as systemic as possible in de determining what your setup is. So the more it can be reduced to uh, logic, the better and the tighter. Uh, and then you need to stick to the system as systemically as possible as well, which most people are incapable of with emotions, particularly after, say, three losses. You'll be snake bite fearful, and after three wins, you'll be piling on twice the size. Um, and that'll be the one that'll lose and give back all of those three wins and some. So that's where focusing on if you had to develop a black box system is not a bad process for defining um, your strategy. And that's what you do find interesting. Observing charts, a lot of observation, a lot of drawing of charts, and a lot of um, use of uh, patterns. Patterns are probably the most powerful technical analysis tool for me outside of the larger trend Dow theory. What are some trading mistakes to avoid? Most, of, most say, trading mistakes made by beginners, even intermediates and occasionally even advanced people when they lose their heads is uh, to do with trade sizing. So that they take a loss too big. There's, nothing, there's no damage done in taking your managed loss. That's part of the game and being wrong. Um, the problem is that recovery ladder when you then emotionally negatively respond to taking an already slightly bigger loss. So let's say you lose 15 or 20 percent and then you think, damn, I want to get back to where I was. So I need to make 25 percent. So I'll trade bigger again. I'm sure I'm right this time. You can't cope with the mental. Um, it's like a mental cognizance. Um, dissonance, uh, cognitive dissonance that c makes you need to get back to where you once were because you're now seeing yourself as the lesser self as dictated by this balance and that then pressurizes you into trading bigger again on a, what looks like a sure thing but now you punch drunk because you must find an opportunity quickly and it's not a sure thing, it's the first thing you grabbed hold of um, that best represents a possible trade so you then bastardizing your criteria to grab hold of something that you expect to leverage you back into where you once were. This is a very big fatal spiral because once again you then over trade because you've got to make back more um, to get back up and that's the recovery ladder concept and boom that's that is probably the single most destructive uh, that sees someone have a 10,000 pound account reduced to you know a few hundred or a thousand pounds and then virtually giving up realizing that they've they've, they've blown it. Um, Size. It's 91% of people are, are in that sort of category. I wouldn't say 91% are in that category. They don't all blow their accounts up from £10,000 down to nine, um, but they aren't possibly consistent with money management as a whole. And sizing is one element of money management. Don't forget, I, I said risk reward should be central to that uh, as well. So they're taking trades that aren't worth the squeeze the juice isn't worth the squeeze, and the probability of win rates, they haven't tested uh, what likelihood they are, have of winning, too tight a stop, something else I've mentioned. All of those things all fall under the larger money management um, cluster, and those are all key. So do you agree with this statement? The only way to make money is slowly and steadily, over time, not trading forex indices, commodities, etc., because they're a giant casino. No, I wouldn't agree with that statement at all. Um, those, those underlying markets uh, can be traded profitably on a consistent basis. There isn't an efficient market hypothesis that truly keeps everything at true value. You, anything that involves people will have reactions and overreactions and underreactions. Um, so no, I think you can. I think I wouldn't be in the game if I didn't feel that there was an edge that could be taken.